Welcome everybody and what you see a beautiful sunset this morning just for you and the only ones out here right now are you and me love being at the beach early in the morning for a sunrise a cup of coffee it's just beautiful I mean how can you not like this it's just absolutely gorgeous it's just the calm before the storm right? That's usually what it looks like right before a hurricane's going to roll in. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Nice calm seas. Everything looks normal until all of a sudden, bam, a hurricane comes rolling in. And for you people that have never been through a hurricane, like before a hurricane, um, experience anything to do with the hurricane, it's a whole totally different type of monster than what you're really used to, it really is. And today we're gonna to talk about how preparedness, being prepared, being a prepper, all ties together with what has taken place and what is predicted for the coming year. Now the US, we're already on set on record to, for a billion dollar climate disasters in 2020. I mean, it was just an unprecedented year for all types of situations. We had all these major disasters, like all the wildfires, you know, all the Western wildfires out in California, all out there, burning millions and millions of acres, destroying homes, lives, people, anything in its path. You know, it's one of those things. It's one of those disasters you can almost really avoid if you pay attention to what is going on and pay attention to the proper authorities that are talking about the certain situations. And if you live in that area, you're probably prepped and ready to leave on a moment's notice. At least I know I would be. Because one day the fire could be 20 miles from you, and the Santa Ana winds just kicked up, and boom, now it's knocking on your door, so you gotta go. You know, there was the record-breaking hurricane season this year. My Lord, we were all the way into the Greek names. It's just quite amazing, you know? I mean, who would have thought? Florida really actually uh, fared quite well. We had a couple small little brushes here and there, but... You know, right down here around Florida, a lot of people were prepped and ready for the uh, unthinkable type of season that we were going to have. And we were pretty lucky and everything basically went to Louisiana, didn't it? I mean, those poor people got hit, what, four or five times with a hurricane? It just seems like they were just getting them one after another. You know, it was like the bullseye point of last year was the Louisiana coast and right up in that area. Everything got funneled right to you poor people. Now, you know, the Midwest had to deal with all the flooding. They had all types of flooding from all the way up into Montana, all the way down through the basin, uh, right down into Texas and everything else. Um, they had to deal with all the tornadoes and stuff that took place this past year, which personally, I'd rather go through a hurricane than a tornado. Reason being, a hurricane is something that you have quite a few days to prepare for, get out of harm's way, and do what you got to do. Or tornado, I grew up in Indiana, so I know this. A tornado, when they sound the siren, you have maybe, if you're lucky, a minute or two to get to your basement or shelter and pray you make it there before the tornado hits. You don't get a lot of time to prep. So in that aspect, I think a tornado outranks a hurricane as far as the surprise. You know, this year they also had to go through, what was that, the Diatro. Came down through all those strong winds and everything else, did all kinds of destruction. It was just quite amazing. You know, they 
this past year, we far outpaced, um, what was it? A yearly average, I think it was like 6.6 storms, I believe it was, to 20, costing over a billion dollars in this, this past year. 2020 was, it was just one heck of a year, all the way around from, you know, everything that was taking place. And you threw in all these catastrophic storms and everything else, and it just made things even worse. Um, this is the sixth year in a row that the United States has experienced 10 or more billion dollar storms and climate re related disasters. Now think about that. It's just unfathomable, you know, I mean, come on, you know, it's like, you know, you're getting smacked in the face with a pandemic, you're getting smacked in the face with all the other stuff. And, you know, you've got all these storms and everything else. And, you know, they're just wreaking havoc on the whole country. Um, I believe it was on December 9th of this past year of 2020. Uh, the, the TSR, they got together and they issued a, basically a pre-forecast of the 2021 hurricane season. And right now, they're stating that it's going to be another very active hurricane season. As you'll see in a couple of charts that are going to pop up behind me right here. And they're really predicting that depending on how everything falls into place, it could be another very active year like this year was. Now, they won't know this all until they'll fine-tune this and know more come spring. Um, that's what I gathered from reading the article that was put out by the TSR. And um, they believe there will be 16 named storms, seven of which will be hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. And that's just their prediction right now from what they are seeing from all their different modeling. Now, we all know how the old modeling and stuff works. And that's another reason why you want to be prepped and ready. Being a prepper is a very great thing if you can be prepped and ready for any type of these storms. Because as I was saying, they're going off of forecast models, things that have happened in the past, different types of all this data and everything else. And half the time, they don't get it right, and the next thing you know, they keep updating stuff and then, you know, re-updating and re-updating it because as they actually get true data that is actually going to take place, you know, when they see high pressures, low pressures, whatever it may be, how they're moving, the water temperatures, and everything else, as far as hurricanes go, changes everything. You know, you're doing a prediction right now off of what could be. So, what could be for you is you start prepping. Now, find this very interesting. I watched several different interviews on my computer with all the emergency management teams and the head of the emergency management teams of Texas, Louisiana, Florida, North Carolina, and South Carolina, because they've already all come out with what they're doing, how they're planning, and everything else. And that's a key word, folks, is planning. You want to make sure that you have a plan in place and that your family knows what the plan is. I've talked about this in several videos, but it is so very important to have a plan, okay? Now, you need to have a plan for any type of disaster, okay? Not just hurricanes. I'm using hurricanes as an example because that's what I have to make sure that I'm ready for, okay? But you can put a plan in place for all the other type of things. Right down to an earthquake, even though you're not going to know when the earthquake hits until after it hits, but you need a plan for an earthquake for afterwards. 
If you can't stay in your home, what do you do? I would suggest if you lived in a hurricane, I mean, a earthquake prone area, you don't really want to keep all your supplies in your house. You know, don't keep all the eggs in one basket. What happens if your house gets shaken down to rubble? Well, everything you had is gone. Stage that stuff in different areas. Friend's house. Family's house. Your family house may be 20 miles from you. Maybe 100 miles from you. Maybe it's in Nevada. Wherever it may be. This way here, something happens. You got some place to go where you know you have some supplies. You know, clean clothes, emergency supplies, first aid kits, food, survival gear, whatever it may be, copies of all your important papers, that type of stuff. So a plan is for any type of disaster, wherever you may live. And every part of this world has different things that it has to deal with. You know, everything isn't all sunny, okay? But anyways, back to what I watched of these emergency management people. They all had one thing in common. They all said, they actually had two things in common. They all said that everybody needs to have a plan and make sure that everybody knows how to execute the plan and what everybody's part in the plan is to help speed up the process of putting the plan in place when the emergency hits. The second thing was is they all agreed that everybody needs to start now to be prepared to buy the supplies you need to start stocking up on your food, batteries, whatever it may be emergency supplies, and everything else, all of their messages were the same. People need to start stocking up now and heed the warnings for the unknown conditions that may be coming in this upcoming year. This way here, if something happens and you're told to leave your home, if you have to evacuate, whether it be for a fire, an earthquake, a hurricane, a flood warning, a dam's going to break, whatever it is that everybody is ready, knows where they're going to go, has a map, paper map, to have to take with you in case some way or reason that your route that you wanted to take is blocked. You have to think about, this is all kind of like playing chess with your plans, okay? When you're playing chess, depending on how you move is how the game goes. You move your pawn from one spot to the other, well, somebody can take your pawn. Eventually, you want to try to get to where you're at a checkmate. So when you're doing your planning and stuff, it's the same thing. You want to make sure that you're running through your plan and making sure that your plan can be executed. But well, what happens if you hit a roadblock? Okay, well, somebody took that pawn, all right? Now, what do I gotta do? Because your whole goal is to get to the other side and capture the king or the queen. Put them in checkmate, but you gotta get there. And so playing chess is kind of like doing your planning. You have to think about all the different types of moves and the strategies that need to go into that. This way here, you're covering all your bases before the emergency hits and your family and you will be safe because you've covered the board. You looked it all over. Maybe you run a dry run and see how it played out. Don't know. That would probably be a great idea. So being ready, planning is all like playing chess. It's all on how you move your pieces and when to move your pieces and when not to move your pieces. 
So the saying goes. Wise man once said, Know your moves. Plan your moves. Then execute your move. So today's video was just trying to give everybody a reminder of what is probably going to be coming our way. I mean, come on, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. We're going to have bad storms and everything else. And we're back to the beach again. Isn't that sunrise just beautiful? But that's really how it looks, folks. Usually a day or so before the hurricane hits, before the waves start rolling in, you know. I mean, it's just calm, peaceful. But you know, when you're looking out there, there's a monster and it's brewing and it's headed your way. So that's the times when you're making all your plans. So this has been Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and that is me. I hope you all enjoyed the sunrise on the beach this morning. Me talking to you, giving you a little bit of information about all the costly storms of last year and how to be ready and how they mean and what they mean to prepping. If you're prepped, you're good to go. You covered all your bases. You played your chess piece right. Checkmate. I'm ready. So until next time, I'll have to find a different spot. But boy, I sure do like that sunrise. Nothing more peaceful. So, you all stay prepping. Everybody stay safe. And until next time, catch you all on the flip side.